I'm Paul Austin, Executive Director of the Arkansas Humanities Council. I've been uh, at the council for about um, four years, I guess. Prior to that, for 24 years, I was Executive Director of the American Indian Society of Arkansas and had a little bit to do with the Trail of Tears Association. So, uh, it's a privilege and honor to be here. Let's see, what do we do here? Oh, it works. So, the question we always get, well, first let me tell you what I want to do. I want to talk about opportunities that you have with your state councils, state humanities councils, um, to apply for grants. And I need to say a little bit about the state councils, but particularly first about the National Endowment for the Humanities, where the state councils get uh, a large amount of their funding. PH was established in uh, 1965. People always ask us, what are the humanities? Uh, the legislation that created the National Endowment for the Arts also created the National Endowment for the Arts. Everyone knows what the arts are. There are arts councils, art institutes, there are humanities uh, centers. Now, what are the humanities? Well, the legislation defines it uh, like this. The study and interpretation of the following language, both modern and classical, linguistics, literature, history, jurisprudence, philosophy, archaeology, comparative religion, ethics, the history, criticism, and theory of the arts, those aspects of social sciences which have humanistic content and employ humanistic methods, and the study and application of the humanities to the human environment with particular attention to reflecting our diverse heritage, traditions, and history, and to the relevance of the humanities to the current conditions of national life. Well, that's a mouthful. Isn't it? What that really should tell you is that the humanities is a pretty broad brush. It's, it's, you can almost fit anything in the humanities. If we're not art, we loathe the arts. The arts are in it. Everyone likes the arts. They get money, all the rich people have a thing with the... Art history, however, that's humanities. You can study the history of art. That's the humanities. So we try to edge in that way. Uh, so it is a broad brush. And that's important to know because you can, it's easy to fit things into the humanities identification. Uh, NEH is an independent federal agency. Uh, it's a part of the Department of Interior. The, the budget comes from the Department of Interior. Um, and it's essentially divided into two sides. Those two sides made, are made up of seven entities, but it's the national side and the state and federal partnerships. And I want to talk just briefly about the national side because those are, those are national grants, they're competitive nationally, and theoretically you would be able to apply for some of them, even though they're much more competitive. Uh, and, but then I want to focus on the state councils, which uh, I think provides you with the best opportunity for funding for them. Trail of Tears uh, projects. And I'll use that through the lens of the Arkansas Council and talk generally uh, about the other councils as well. There are, um, as I said, six national divisions within NEH. Well, this PowerPoint stuff is very good. Cool. I understand there's something called uh, YouTube. That's supposed to be pretty cool. And, and texting. I've heard of texting. Okay, challenge grants. Uh, so what's the purpose of challenge grants? Strengthen the institutional base of, of the humanities, help institutions increase fundraising capabilities. Who can apply? Institutions. So colleges and universities. Digital humanities, which really is becoming a very popular uh, area for uh, humanities uh, grants, activities. This national program is for utilizing digital technology uh, and its impact on the humanities in a broad sense. But we're also seeing a lot of digital activities uh, on the state level as well. So for example, the Virginia Foundation for Humanities just got a $2 million grant from NEH to digitize the uh, sum of George Washington's papers. So it's a huge project. So that was a national, uh, that was a national grant. Um, you can imagine the opportunity for digitizing, for example, would it be a great project to digitize the Cherokee removal documents in the uh, National Archives? Uh, 
uh, education programs within NEH um, to strengthen teaching and learning in the humanities and schools and colleges across the nation. They also fund summer seminars and institutes uh, and teaching development um, uh, projects. Um, I know there have been a couple of professors in Arkansas that have received national NEH education grants funding a summer institute for teachers. And one of them, uh, this uh, gentleman took his participants to uh, South Africa. So it was a really neat project. So it can happen. Preservation and access funds, uh, grants to preserve and create access to humanities collections, grants to create research and reference tools, research and development projects, education and training grants, national digital newspaper program, which is a really neat program, preservation assistance, grants for smaller institutions, grants to document endangered languages, we're starting to see more activities in uh, tribal languages, and grants to sustain uh, cultural heritage collections. And I think you can see some opportunities to fit uh, trail tier stuff like that into the national public programs, uh, grants to provide uh, opportunities for lifelong learning, connecting humanities scholarships with the general public. Uh, its core programs are projects in historical and cultural organizations, grants to America's media makers, an exhibition, discussion series, lectures, and symposia, site interpretation, television, radio, and websites. Um, again, you can see some real opportunities there. The research, they sponsor uh, fellowship and summer stipends for uh, professors, academics, collaborative research, scholarly editions and translations, and then the state councils. So there are 56 state councils, all the states and the territories, um, all, have, all have a humanities council. They're not all called uh, the state humanities council. Some of them are called uh, Humanities Washington, Humanities Iowa, the Virginia Foundation, uh, but most are called the Arkansas Humanities Council, Humanities Tennessee, they're all essentially from, uh, they're referred to as independent affiliates of the National Endowment for Humanities. So we are independent, we're 501c3, we have board of directors, um, but we get monies by formula from NEH, and, and that's great. Um, our, so what I want to focus on now is opportunities for you and your state, with your state council, to, to get some funding for some projects. And let's talk about Arkansas, and I think that will give you generally an idea of how to approach your state councils. So in Arkansas, we have uh, three general grant requirements. It must be a humanities project, so it must fit into one of those categories we talked about before. Mm -hmm. It must have a humanities scholar involved in the project. Now that's critical in all humanities uh, projects. You've got to have a scholar. Council grant funds may account for no more than 50% of the total cost of the project. So it's essentially a matching grant. Now there are four principles that NEH requires us uh, to adhere to. To provide support for humanities projects selected in open competition on the basis of established criteria that are widely known. So how do we do that? Well, we do that through our grant program that has two types of grants, major and many. Our major grants are done twice a year. Again, each council is different. Some only do major grants once a year. Uh, many grants are done every month, except for December. Uh, the major grants are uh, reviewed uh, by the entire board twice a year. Many grants are done by committee uh, once a month. So what are the major grant categories? Public programs, there's no maximum amount. Research grants, uh, up to $2,000. Publication grants, 3,500. Those are mostly subvention grants to uh, established uh, peer-reviewed uh, press, mostly academic press. Uh, and media, which is an expanding area. Film and video pre-production has a $5,000 maximum. Film or video production, 25,000. And other media, uh, digital media, museums, wayside exhibits, uh, there's no specified uh, maximum. Mini grants, there are three kinds of mini grants. Planning, $1,000 maximum. Public programs, $1,500. And research, uh, $1,500. So what kind of things, what, what does that mean? What, what kind of things have we funded in Arkansas? 
that might be relevant to what you might be interested in. We've actually given grants to the Arkansas chapter of the Travel Tears Association. I did a public program mini grant called Historic Roads Research and Remembrance. Um, did another media major grant from the whole Washington, Washington, Arkansas, and the Choctaw Travel Tears. And um, that was a publication. And I did a major research grant that's still ongoing, Indian Removal in Arkansas. Um, 2000, it started in 2008, that was $3,900. Um, really a good project. We've also given some Travel Tears related grants to Sequoia National Research Center, some of you may know uh, Dr. Littlefield. The public program major grants to the uh, Sequoia uh, Symposium, quite a few of those. Uh, and currently they're uh, working on a grant that they were awarded in 2011, Southwest Trail Corridor, Little Rock to Fulton Phase 1, for $10,500. That's a nice, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice grant amount to be able to do that. So what do you need to do when you're thinking about applying for a grant? You need to read the grant guidelines. Almost without exception, they're available online. But they'll also send you a hard copy if you want it. And you read the grant guidelines and, and do the following things. You want to confirm your el eligibility. In Arkansas, and I think this is the case in all the councils, you do not have to be a 501c3. You do have to be a formed a not-for-profit. We do not give grants to individuals. It has to be either a not-for-profit organization or it can be a governmental entity, a school or a college. Um, but you must be formed not-for-profit. You don't have to have the IRS 501c3. But we want to see uh, that you have a board of directors, that you have a checking account in your organization's name, and you want to give me a comfort level that you're going to be able to handle the, the uh, fiduciary responsibilities of the federal funds that we're going to award you. Um, we actually have a form that you fill out attach the documents and, uh, and then we'll approve you for it. Okay, so once you're an approved organization, you don't have to reapply for mm -hmm. the eligibility every time you apply for a grant. The next thing you want to do is you, you want to choose and meet with your humanities scholar. Every grant that we award has to have a humanities scholar. In Arkansas, we require that the scholar sign a form saying they agreed to be the scholar on this project and they attach their resume to it. We think this is real critical to the work that we do. We really want to connect scholars with communities so that the scholars get out of the world of academia and out into the communities. And we want to connect particular organizations that aren't normally in contact with that world, connect them. And uh, so we, and any age requires a humanities scholar on every project. Well, then the question is, what's a humanities scholar? Well, a humanities scholar is someone who's an expert in the field. The majority of the time, that's Dr. So-and-so at the university. The vast majority of our grants are history grants. So it's usually uh, the history professor at the local uh, college. But it doesn't have to be. Uh, sometimes we've done grants that were had a cultural focus. Uh, and it might be important if you want to do something about Cherokee culture and history scholar might be a Cherokee elder who does not have a PhD in Cherokee culture, but uh, is the expert. Uh, and so that, that, that's the kind of thing that, that, that the council looks at in terms of what is a scholar. You want to choose your project category. What are you going to do? Is it a film project? Is it a public program? Is it media? Is it research? Is it planning? You've got to choose a project. This may sound simple, but choosing complete the appropriate forms, you want to complete the budget explanation. One of the things that often trips up applicants is the budget. Because the budget is the easiest thing to analyze. The numbers add up or they don't. And you may not, you may be sitting on the board and evaluating applications. You may not be an expert in this particular area, but you understand money. So applicants often get in trouble with their budget. So we require that you fill out the budget form, that's the number require that you also have a budget explanation, a narrative about each one of those categories. Tell us what you're going to do uh, with the money. Then you want to submit the original grant application form and any of the attachments and meet the appropriate deadlines. So I tell people that, look, uh, 
for major grants in, sept in Arkansas September 15th and February 15th. So we're in the middle of a grant process now. Folks have applied by the September 15th deadline. We're going to award the grants at the November uh, 9th board meeting. The funds will be available <coughs> in December. So it's important to get the grant in so we can stamp it as received before September 15th. Then we can do whatever we need to do to try to, uh, to, try to make it right. Um, our goal at the council with the staff is to, we don't reject applications. I think we're a little different and most of the state councils operate this way as well. Um, staff does not approve the applications. The board actually does the work. Our goal is to make the application as good as it can possibly be they can make the best decision they can. So we want the application to meet the needs of the applicants, what they want to do with what sorts of things the board wants to find. And then the application has to stand on its own. Um, but it's time for the board to get to make, to make those decisions. So get the application into us. Then you'll get a call. It'll be assigned to a project officer. And then you'll get a call or a letter from the project officer that says, okay, here are the issues we see. Here are the things that we think maybe ought to change. Let's address this. What is this budget category? Those are the kind of things that you can work with the program officer on. What I tell the nervous applicant is get something into us by September 15. We may end up rewriting the whole thing. Let's get it in stamped September 15. So pay attention to that time. So what does the application generally look like? I think this is pretty standard throughout all the state counties. You have to describe how your project was planned. How, how did you come up with this idea? What's the genesis of it? Why are you doing it? Explain the humanities content of the project. So, as I said, most of our stuff, our, our grants, are history focused, but not, but not all of them. But often we'll get an application that's art. You know, someone wants to paint a picture. <laughs> it's art. We don't, we don't reject applications. We'll tell the applicant, you know, that's, this looks like art. We're probably not going to fund this. And we encourage them to withdraw. But if they don't, the board gets it. And they'll say, looks like art. So it gets turned down. So, you know, you really want to think about the humanities content of the project. And that's what the program officer will, will work with you on. And you want to list the names of your principal humanities scholar with their resumes. And in Arkansas, we require them to sign a form. I don't know if all the states do that. They should we have had instances where a humanities scholar didn't know they were the scholar. And one time, it was a person on the board. So in discussing that application, she said, uh, I'm not going to recuse myself because they didn't even contact me. So guess what? That one didn't get funded. Uh, so you want to list the names of your principal humanities scholars. Um, it's also really important to us and all the councils to describe the audience that your project is going to serve. Often applicants in Arkansas think that the project has to be an Arkansas-focused project, and that's simply not the case. It has to be for an Arkansas audience. It doesn't have to be Arkansas history or Arkansas literature or anything, but it has to be for an Arkansas audience. So you want to describe who it is that you're trying to reach with your project. And we want to see about publicity, because we want this to be a public program, even if it's research, we want, it has to be available to the public. And we want to see how you plan to let the public know that, that what you're doing is, is happening, whether it's a research or a publication or certainly a public program. Um, what are you going to do about publicity? And then evaluation. You have to have an evaluation plan. Um, some of those are very sophisticated, some of them aren't. Um, that's always the biggest challenge for us for the evaluation. It's always the weakest part of all applications. And I think, in my opinion, it's because um, evaluations are often of minimal value. Everyone has to have them. Okay, fine, we've got one. So we try not to be too picky. Do you have an evaluation plan? What is it? Thank you. And I, I like to tell people this story because I do have kind of hang up on evaluation. This was one of our early Trailer Tears conferences that I did. Tori, you may you've heard me tell this story. And so we filled out the forms. You're probably going to do them here, check and one through five, whatever that stuff is. And they're always the same. It's either this is the best thing I've ever been in, or what a bunch of crap. It's always the experience. <laughs> and, and, but often there's interesting comments. 
So this is the National Trail of Tears Conference, just like your breakout. And one of them said, too much about the Trail of Tears. <laughs> well, that's real help. <laughs> I think next time we'll do Trail of Tears and the Holocaust. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, so I try not to let the board get too hung up on the evaluation plan. That looks like one thing that I think is helpful on evaluation is don't have the people doing the program evaluate. So if Paul Austin's the project director and Troy Poteet's the humanities scholar, don't have the evaluation committee, Paul Austin and Troy Poteet. <laughs> that might be a red flag. That's not hard to do. So you do need to, to have evaluation. Now budget. I really think budget can be important. It's budget's pretty easy to do. But it's also easy to mess up, and it's easy for evaluators to have problems with. Um, my experience is that often what happens is uh, those that are making the decision about grants end up with more grants than they can fund. So they have to look for reasons not to fund projects they normally would fund. And if numbers don't add up, that's a good reason not to fund. Then you're nervous about, well, are they going to be able to handle money? And, so really pay attention to the budget. Make sure the numbers add up. You got it. And our form includes this stuff to help you do that. So you've got to tell us what kind of cash you're receiving from your own organization, if you're receiving any. Remember, it can't be more than 50% of the project that the uh, Management Council funds. So tell us about how much cash and what you're going to use it for. In-kind contributions from application. Uh, that's by far the majority of our matching is in kind. And that's local organizations who charge the time of their volunteers uh, for their end. So you, you list that. You also list cash and in-kind from third parties. But if you're going to list it from third parties, we have to have a document saying you've got it. So it doesn't do any good to list the Walmart grant you hope to get. You need to have that in hand. If you hope to get it, you don't have it, and you can't count it as part of your matching. And then you want to tell us about the amount you requested from us and what you're going to do. That include both numbers um, and a budget narrative, and I think that's pretty standard throughout uh, throughout all the all the councils. So then, in, in Arkansas, and in, in most cases, then the board reviews these applications. What kind of things generally are they looking for? Well, they they're going to be looking for the intellectual quality of the project. Does this thing have a significant humanities uh, topics and text? And are there clear and uh, persuasive rationales for the project? So make your case as to why this is important. They want to see the quality of the project design. Is this thing going to work? Is it going to make sense to the public? Uh, does it look like you can do it? And then the potential, potential for significant results. And I think that's also, that's really important for Trail of Tears stuff because there's not a lot of Trail of Tears funding going on out there. This is going to be new areas states are going to be interested in it because they haven't seen it before. And so the results can be quite significant for the history of that state. Document what happened with the, the injury removal in, in that state. So the potential for significant results, those are the kind of things that the board will be looking at when they're beginning to make, make their decision. Keeping in mind that these are competitive grants. So um, there's always more applications for more money than we have available almost all. Some helpful hints. Um, read the guidelines. That sounds simple, but it's amazing how many people don't. And we, we can tell pretty quick on the phone call. And read the guidelines. So read the guidelines. They're all available online. And they'll even send you a hard copy if you ask them. Call the council and speak to a program officer. To me, that's really critical and, and really helpful. Um, you know, I mentioned to you that get the application in, let's get it stamped before September 15th. Then we can do some. Call that program office and say, here, kind of what I'm thinking about. What do you think? And they'll help you because our goal, we want good applications. We want, to, we want to fund these projects. The way the Arkansas Council uses its NEH money um, is, is a little different than some of the other councils. We really focus on re-grant, grant making. NEH kind of lets us do what we want to do. We don't have to do grants. We can do all council-generated programs. Where we would sit around with the board and come up with programs and do them and hope the public would come. And some councils do that. We really want 
state citizens of Arkansas to tell us what they want and let us help them get it done through funding. Uh, but the danger of that is that we're at the mercy of the applicant. Uh, you know, we're not doing our job if we're not giving money away. We, we need to do credit. And we're at the mercy of the applicant, so I'm really nervous before these September 15 and February got, uh, deadlines because I'm nervous about what kind of applications are we going to get. Is this going to be the time when they're all just crap? <laughs> they're not going to get funded? And oh my God, then now what are we going to do? We've got to carry on. So we're at the mercy of the applicant. And some councils uh, are thinking about not doing it anymore for that very reason. They don't trust what they're getting over the transit. Uh, but I'm always nervous, and then we always get plenty. Always able to, always get more than we can find, frankly. So it's important to, to, to speak to the program officer. Their, their job is to, is to get a good application. Nothing makes them feel better. And, and the board likes nothing better than to have more good applications than they can find. Uh, you can ask for sample proposals. Uh, some councils are reluctant to do that, um, and I'm not always sure how helpful that is. But for example, in Arkansas, we list on our website uh, the funded project. And that can give you a sense of what's going on. Submit a draft proposal. Um, in Arkansas, we just want you to submit the application by the deadline, and that can essentially be a draft. Just get it into us, then we can. Then a program officer will be assigned to the application. Their job is to work with you to make it a good application. So you'll either get a phone call or a letter saying, good grief, <laughs> this is terrible. Ain't you? But that doesn't mean don't do it, Re withdraw it. That means let us help. Here's what we think you need to do. Uh, take that advice or not, as I said, we don't reject them. Um, but we're, we've got a lot of experience. We know what this board does. We know their tendencies. And so pay attention to your program officer. Um, Write clearly and know your audience. So who's, who are the folks on that board? More importantly, what kind of things have they traditionally funded? You can find all that information out. In Arkansas, you can find it online. Um, now, we don't, well, I shouldn't say no. I work real hard at, at uh, encouraging the board not to grade papers. In Arkansas, our board is half higher ed, half so, you know, the college professors will grade papers. And so we really work hard at them. If they're not grade papers, let's wade through the poor grammar and the syntax, subject verb, mismatch, and that, those kind of things. And let's see, what, what are they trying to do? What's going to be the end result of this? And I think we do a good job at what I call rolling the dice. You know, let's, let's give this small, in some cases naive, new organization, unsophisticated, but if you will wade through the misspellings and the rough syntax, you'll see that there's actually a pretty cool project here. <coughs> Let's roll the dice. What's the worst that can happen? And usually the worst that can happen is, uh, you know, nobody will come to a public meeting, you will find it, we'll do it again. But uh, rarely is it something bad. So we work real hard, because if you get an application from the Bold Pilgrim African American Cemetery, outside of Morland, Arkansas, and an application from the University of Arkansas. Those are going to be two different applications. They're going to look really different. One's going to look very sophisticated, well-written, wonderful narrative, very ooh, engaging. And the other one's not, not going to look that way. But if you work with them, you can see the bottom line is the Old Pilgrim Cemetery Organization is trying to save the last physical evidence of an African, African American this community went away, early teens maybe, people all moved. And the only physical evidence that he was even there are the cemeteries. And so these folks cleaned up that cemetery, and put a fence around it, protected it from encroachment of developers and agriculture, and the forest. Uh, they identified the grave, uh, the people who had headstones, identified many of the ones who didn't have headstones, they researched funeral home records, and they ended up with a book and a, and a, a video, a film, about this bold pilgrim community of African Americans that uh, came to Arkansas in the 1870s. 
and by by 1930 they had scattered out into Marlton and Little Rock and the other surrounding towns. Uh, the economies and things change. The cemetery stayed there, and some of the old timers decided to try to save it. What a wonderful project! Well, the first application um, I was on the board then. This was a humanities grant. It was in competition with grants at the University of Arkansas, where they're doing uh, serious real uh, research in the field of archaeology. And uh, the, the Bowl Pilgrim asked for a lawnmower and weed. And I can remember some of the academics on the board saying, well, that's not humanity. <laughs> and someone said, but you know, they can't tell who that headstone is unless they clear the brush off, see what's there. And the archaeologists can't help them identify gravesites unless they unbrush it. So, and fine, they, they were embarrassed and so they funded it, barely. And now that's one of our special projects. We have money set aside for that. We've got federal NEH specific grant for that cemetery project. And that started with a very unsophisticated organization. So it's important that these councils roll the dice. And I think, and I think most of them do. They're, they're looking for that project that, that's a little different. And then if you're turned down, uh, ask for comments. In Arkansas, we send the no letter, and then I invite them to give me a call, and I'll, I'll talk them through why it was turned down. I won't get specific about what jerk brought in the end. But, you know, I'll tell them what the problems were. And sometimes those are solvable problems, and I'll encourage them to reapply. Sometimes they're not. You know, if it's, if it's art, it's art. I'm not going to get funded. But sometimes it was, uh, there was just some thing, the budget maybe was an issue. They weren't clear on the narrative and the humanities content. They weren't clear on what they were going to do, so the board wasn't real confident that they were actually going to do this. Too ambitious. So, encourage them to reapply. And sometimes, uh, the, the reason they got turned down is we didn't have enough money. In Arkansas, the way we do it is we go through the initial evaluation process, the board does, twice a year, in the grants, as if we had all the money in the world. So, the first round of voting is is this a project we'd like to fund if we had? And then, at the end of the day, I add up the numbers and give them the bad news. And, you know, they've approved $150,000 worth of grant. Uh, they've approved $200,000. We've got one hundred fifty. So now we have to go to the second round of voting and eliminate some of those that we had originally uh, approved. And so I, you know, that's it's not a bad thing to be able to tell that applicant. You know, that one was initially approved. If they had the money, they would have funded it. So y'all don't give up. Let's try again. Sometimes you can get into strategies as to, you know, one of the things I might tell them is don't ask for $50,000. We don't have a maximum, but I'm telling you, that's too much. They're not going to do it. And, for example, if you ask for a $50,000 grant, they initially voted yes. And then, then when we got through, they had overspent my $50,000. They've got two choices. They can eliminate five of them, $10,000 grants, or they can eliminate one at fifty. It's usually the one at 50. Now, those folks in the grant making world would say, well, you know, that's not the best way to do it, but I'm telling you, that's what they do. So, sometimes there's some strategies about how much you ask for. I can say this if we've got a $5,000 maximum and you ask for $4,999, you're not tricking anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and ask for $5,000. That's okay. Uh, but it's okay to, to, to ask for. Well, why didn't this get funded? And that's what I get paid the big bucks for. No matters. <laughs> and sometimes it goes well. Uh, you should know uh, the limit of funding that the council can grant. So look, look at. So don't apply for a media grant that has twenty-five thousand dollars maximum. Don't, don't ask for fifty. You know, you're starting off in the wrong place. Um, you should look at what sorts of things the council has funded and how much money they funded in, in each of the grant sessions and kind of, so kind of know what your competition is out there. Look at what they funded in the past, what kind of projects they, they tend to like. Know the process. How to ask, what are the guidelines of, from each council, how do they decide. And I told you in Arkansas the board makes the decisions, not the staff. We don't even make recommendations. We just work with the applicant to make it as good as it can be, and then the board makes the decision. Um, and not all councils do it that way. Some of them have committees, and they recommend the board, and the staff recommend. 
But we do it that way for a couple of reasons. Um, if you don't, if, if the public knows that the staff making the decision, they all want to buy me lunch, is the way that works. And so we eliminate that issue. Um, the other thing, though, is for the council itself. In Arkansas, they really have an ownership of the work of the council. The board meetings are not just a rubber stamp of what I say in the financial report and half a day and everyone's bored and they go home. They work, they, they, they have a real um, ownership of that. They've made a commitment in their time. When they get a stack of 20 to 30 applications and they've got to read them and make notes and be able to have a discussion about it, my God, they're coming to the board meeting. And a board is only a board if it needs. And if folks don't feel like the board meeting is worthwhile, they may not even realize it, but all of a sudden, yep, we're coming, yep, we're coming. Oh, wait, Beulah's having a birthday, I'll go to that. And all of a sudden, people stop coming to meetings. And the other thing that happens is the dynamics of the board change, so that they don't feel like it's quite theirs. The Arkansas Humanities Council, it's theirs. I mean, they have to sit around that table for a day and a half and hash this thing out. And that creates a real vibrancy that I think makes the organization valuable uh, and worthwhile. And know how the councils can help you. That it's not simply throw it in, hope they fund it. They're really there. They want to do these grants. And I work real hard at making sure the board doesn't get too caught up in ownership of the money. You know, our job is when we say, well, you know, we've got to protect the money. No, we're going to give the money out. We need to give this stuff out. We need to award these grants. Let's hope for the best. Are they all perfect? No. If we wait on the perfect grant, we're not going to fund anything. Let's roll the dice. What's the worst that could happen? Let's get this money out. If it's close, let's fund it. Then if we fund it too much and we have to cut back, then we can get nitpicky. But initially, let's fund these things. Um, the other thing for the applicant is don't feel like you've got to do it by yourself. Ask your colleagues and ask uh, the councils for, for help as well. Remember that outstanding humanities subjects, texts, scholars, and scholarship are at the center of all successful NEH grants. What we want to do is provide an opportunity for connection to the humanities to those people that aren't the normal consumers of the humanities. It's not uh, people in Little Rock. It's people in my hometown, Himbo, which is up in the hills of the Ozark population 400. Uh, they can come to Little Rock to get some humanities stuff. But this year, for example, in Arkansas, we sponsored a series of reading and discussion groups throughout the state, not in the cities, on the Civil War. So folks had to commit five nights over a two-month period. When the lecture was reading and discussion, we hired a Civil War scholar to lead the discussion. Well, that was the sort of thing that they, if you didn't live in the college town, you just simply did not get. We put that out in the communities, connecting, um, providing opportunities for those folks that aren't the normal consumers of the humanities to connect to the humanities. That's really the intent and purpose of the, of the state councils. Now, the, each of the states that the trail goes through has a humanities council. I wonder if, uh, if we could, what if we're connected? Uh, in, in, anyway. Um, I've got a list of them here that I'll have uh, Jared make copies and send to everyone, and uh, you can go to their website. And I really encourage you to go to the website. Um, they, they all do, all of these councils do grants, uh, essentially like we do in Arkansas. They all have uh, certainly the same general philosophies about that. They may have, they'll have different deadlines, and different categories, and different forms, but essentially these basic precepts and tenets that we talked about today exist in all of these councils. And I think if you would look on their websites at previously funded projects, you'll see very few, well, even Native American focused grants, very few, certainly parameter stuff that happened. So they're going to be really interested in that. It's going to be something new for them, and uh, I think it might be a good opportunity. You can do public programming, um, certainly research. I'd love to see some more. Folks from Arkansas apply for some more trail tiers research grants, and they may pay for some travel to some archives, that, that kind of thing. It could really be good. I think councils would be interested in some digitizing of existing archives. Um, I just think there's some real, really good opportunities for you if you'll, if 
go about it, take advantage of it. So, any questions, comments, suggestions? Anyone have a project or thinking about in their state? You want to talk about that? Anything at all? Yes. Do, if let's say you were doing the twenty-five thousand dollars maximum thing, and you were one of those that might be pumped, do, do you all ever partial fund, uh, or is it is it to, all or yeah. all or nothing? Is well, nothing? usually we don't. And again, each council is different. Uh, in Arkansas, we usually don't do that because that can get. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to create a culture where the applicant uh, over budgets, thinking you're automatically going to cut. So there's that issue. Plus, we really encourage the applicant to, to apply for the program they want to do. So that you know, if we start cutting, it's changing the program. And what happens is they're going to take the money. But maybe they've now agreed to a program that they really weren't as committed to as they Now, that being said, we have done that. So for example, we had a subvention grant, a planning grant, I'm sorry, a research grant for a book on the uh, uh, governor's mansion in Arkansas. And uh, the, the historian that was doing it uh, asked for travel monies to go to places to interview governors and, and uh, their children, that sort of thing. And one of the trips was to D.C. to interview uh, Governor Clinton and Hillary. And, so the board said, you know what? They're in Arkansas all the time. So we're not going to do that. So they awarded the grant, but they eliminated that travel. It didn't work out. So these kind of things do happen. If there's an easy way to do it, either it's something that the board really likes that project, they want to do everything, but they're not going to do this little thing here, they'll eliminate that. Or if it's a way to fit within the budget. So that we've got, we need to get it down to 150, we've got it to 153. Can we eliminate three over here for something? They may do that. But some councils absolutely do it exactly that way. We're going to find half of it here. Hope for the best. So, uh, what we encourage our applicants to do is to give us the project you want to do. We'd like it to be that nothing can be cut. But sometimes that does happen. Yes? What is the average grant amount? Um, oh, I would say about 8000 Okay, and how many do you give? We'll give about uh, three hundred fifty thousand a year uh, oh. grants, and we do. Uh, we also that that also includes, we have a we have a program called Edu uh, called Reach, uh, realizing excellence and achievement. And I never get to remember what it is, but anyway, it's a Winthrop Rockefeller Foundation money that we grant up to two thousand dollars to a classroom, a school. Uh, and those are done. But our NEH money is essentially, it's about 300 to 400. A year. A year. Yes, ma'am. What about, um, you said that there, there needed to be a scholar's conference. Right. But what if you have a graduate student who's even a nonprofit group in a state? Does that count as a scholar, or do you need to still have a No, you could. You just have to make the case. To make the case why that person is the one you want. That's all you have to do. Now, you know, that may be an issue with some of the board members. You know, if you've got, for example, in Arkansas, if you've got a grant that's sort of edging into archaeology, or is completely archaeology, you better have the right scholar. Because I've got two archaeologists on the board, they'll eat you alive. And, or if you're having a grant on the Indian stuff, you better have it right. Because not only do the two archaeologists, they've got me. And I smell the wannabes. Million miles away, so that's not going to work. So you can't have some nut in your scholar, so that's not going to happen. But you got to make the cuts. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. There's the, I haven't got a ton of experience with the difference between the National Endowment and the Georgia Humanities Council in Georgia. We've had a number yeah. of the small, I, I, we're grateful for anybody we get, yeah. but they are small. Yeah. And then we are planning to apply for a National Endowment yeah. of Humanities big, big grant. But there right. doesn't seem anything in the middle. You either can get your $8,000 grant or your $1.2 million grant. No, you're and exactly right. Why is that? That's the challenge. Well, uh, the state councils have limited resources. That's their problem. They'd rather give a lot of small ones than a couple of them. The national NEH is a challenge. And it, it, that is exactly the issue that we continue to talk to NEH about. For example, I, I met one of the national areas called public programs. What we'd like for them to do is to take that out of the national side and give it to the state councils. Spread that money out by the same formula we get the other money. 
and give each of the state counties so that folks can apply for us for that program. And that would probably be, uh, for Arkansas, that might be, I don't know, $300,000. Well, that's huge. And that would make sure that that pot of money that now primarily goes to the edges uh, would, would come to, to everyone. I think I think the Tennessee director will tell you that they haven't received a national NEH grant in like 15 years. Nobody in Tennessee. So, I mean, that is an issue. You're, you're exactly right. And, you know, who's, who knows what the future holds for that. <laughs> but that is a challenge. And the national grants are just monstrous. Really tough. Good luck. But the Georgia Council is a good council. Yes. So our, our, council, our, our state councils can be considered that nonprofit. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Suggestions? No complaints. Troy, you can do well, I just keep thinking that uh, what kind of credentials would you need to have to apply to do uh, programming to make it available? Uh, to educate people about war films. That would be such a great thing in most of the Southeast. I wanted to I wanted a filmmaker to I don't know if I said this, but we, we don't we only do it to organizations, you can't do it to individuals, but anyway. I've always wanted a documentarian to do a film do a you could almost do it without words. <laughs> Just switching back and forth to the pro fair and then that pal out. <laughs> just not say anything. Here you go. What do you think? <laughs> no one's taking me up on that all. <laughs> You're right. It might give the public too much credit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is not an Indian. This, this is. is. Okay. We might have to have some script maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's a challenge. And what's uh, you think that would get grant funding, or if you could, if an organization was doing? <laughs> I think, I think though, you know, not all the councils are doing work filming, but I think if someone would, really, you know, the right filmmaker. The problem is twenty-five thousand dollars in the at all. But humanities councils often are first funders, so the filmmaker gets twenty-five thousand from us to do uh, pre. Uh, stuff. And then other more serious funders say, oh, Manchester Council's jumped in first, we'll give 100000 The filmmakers will tell you that uh, that first funder stuff is really critical to them to get even big bucks from the larger foundation that you see the PBS and these kind of things. Uh, so we're, we just, one of our films on, uh, on architecture just won an Emmy Award. Really a neat, really a just a wonderful film. I'm hoping we're going to be able to see that. So. Local or national? It's a national. Film. It's very good. Do you have so. anything to do with that book, Architecture of the Ozark? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no I didn't have anything to do with that. That would be a good film. <laughs> That'd be a different film. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of good projects, you guys, not doing anything. I know you're. And you all get paid huge money by your state <laughs> chapters to do all this work. So you've got to pay Thanks for coming. Thank you.